Hello everybody, and welcome back to Tony North Eastern. And uh, we're going to take a little break from me building the trusses. Um, if I'd continue doing the video of the trusses, it would have been the same video as last week. So what I've decided to do this week is to have a little tour of the layout. Um, two reasons. Firstly, the amount of subscribers who have joined the channel over the past couple of months has been um, overwhelming to say the least. Um, there's at least 200 of you who have joined in the last couple of months. So it'd be nice for you guys to see other parts of the layout uh, instead of the main focus which has been the station over there. And secondly, um, a few weeks back, uh, Chris from Weezy Palace Junction Railway um, mentioned me in one of his videos and um, about coming to visit the layout. And uh, I said, yes, you're more than welcome to come and visit the layout. And then over a couple of converse, phone conversations, um, with all the best intentions, um, he wouldn't think it would be possible. So, Chris and the new subscribers, this video is for you guys. And for anybody else who wants to uh, join in. So, I'm standing just roughly where the loft hatch is. And you come up and this is what you see. Um, it's basically a, a figure eight shape. It goes around the back there and comes underneath the Green Girder Bridge up Stevenson's Bank and around through High Shield Station and then back through to South Shield Station over there. So what we'll do is um, We'll head over to South Shield Station and um, we'll jump on a train. I think we've got a train waiting in the station, even though there's building work going on. So, let's do the tour. So, this is where we're going to start the tour at South Shield Station. And um, this is where the focus has been for at least over a year now. And uh, we're slowly getting there. And um, by the looks of it, quite a few of you have heard about the tour. And look at the amount of buses. There must be hundreds of you going to get on this tour. So yeah, this uh, station is what it would have been like in the 1930s, pre-war. And um, if you've been following the series, and if you want to know more about this station, I did do a research video on this station, um, which gives you more information than what I can remember, to be honest. So, all aboard.
John, look, it's an A4. Yeah, it's the special. Wow, we don't see many of them on the Shields branch. Right, so here we are guys. We're at the first stop on the line, which is High Shields. Um, I've done quite a few videos um, of High Shields, including the making. Um, it's, it's had its fair share of stories. This is the home of the train spotters who you've just uh, met over there, which is um, Jason, John and Joe. So let me tell you a little bit more about the High Shields area. Um, the station itself is a super quick kit. Um, slightly modified. Um, all I've done there is added the side building and uh, covered it in brick paper and enhanced it a little bit. And uh, that's all I've done with that. And the other half of this super quick kit is on the other side of the platform there. Now, you have to search my back catalogue and how I've built this area. I started way in that corner and then worked my way out because this piece here is at least four foot deep from this corner here. Uh, so it's, it's quite a bit of a struggle to reach into that corner. Um, the railway in is a Metcalf kit bashed. Uh, it was originally a couple of shops and I did do a how-to on this and it's, it was quite straightforward. It was probably one of the kit bashed bashed I did <laughs> for the layout. Oh, can't get me over to um, yeah. Um, yeah, all the lights are working in the buildings. So I just haven't got them on at the moment. Let me go and put them on. Right, so I've put the lights on now so we can have a proper look around and um, maybe see some of the detail um, I've put inside the buildings. Um, so we've talked about the Medcalf kit bashing. And uh, this building here, which is the Vicarage, was the first um, scratch build I did for the layout. Um, and as you can see, I painted the rooms out and I added some fireplaces. You can just about make them out in both rooms. Um, but what I forgot to do is add some stairs from the front door going up into the upper rooms but um, apart from that there's still one thing missing up there I still haven't done the guttering in the drain pipes uh, maybe it's something else I can do later on and uh, look, there's Father Brown he's in a hurry again and uh, <laughs> you recognize some of the bits there from the um, Christmas video I did last year. Uh, there's Billy Wiz and the sledge, the snowman and the flattened sledge which uh, Santa Claus landed on. Things we do for entertainment. And uh, that's a Metcalf kit as well. Um, what I did with this is I moved the door. I mean when you buy the kit the door is on this side. And so what I did was I just filled it in, covered it up with a bit of stone paper and moved the door to here. And you can just make out where the window would have been here. That's what I like about Medcalf kits. You can um, bash them about a bit. 
and uh, in the lower room here there's a there should be a three-piece suite in there and a lady sitting on the sofa uh, I don't think I did a video of that I think I just added that in and in the upper room there in the bedroom it's something what the butler saw so I will not um, delve in too much for that you know you can't you can barely see it anyway let's get in keeps the video under PG right and then we have the chip shop and that's where John lives he lives above the chip shop and then we have uh, the bungalow and the gatekeeper's cottage that uh, Mo Edwards lives in. And he looks after the lads, he lets them know what trains are due on the branch, but uh, I don't think he mentioned that the A4 was going to come on the branch, but uh, there you go. And then we have the tunnels. Right, I think we shall move on to the next station. So, I'll see you all at Time Dock. So we have now arrived at Time Dock. Um, what can I say about Time Dock? Well, it was one of the first stations to be completed on the railroad, and um, most of everything you see on the station you can buy. Um, there's no um, scratch building here. Uh, at all with, um, this station. Um, I think the only thing I did was a minor alteration to this building here. I uh, just narrowed it a little bit just so I could get it in between the main line and the branch line. Uh, I think I took um, 10 mil off either side and uh, put it together. Um, yeah, if we drop the camera down, you see a little bit of the shipyards there, it's just the back scene, but um, I don't know if you notice something strange about these bridges. They're at 7 mil scale. Because yeah, originally this layout was intended to be a O gauge layout. With a single line over there and a twin line in here. And then I changed my mind and went for double O gauge. But I did not change the buttresses. I left them as they were, and I just painted them up. And uh, they look alright. 
uh, I didn't think it was worth the effort to change them. Right, so let's have a few minutes around the station. Now this station is quite unique as it has an underpass and they make calf kits as well. So we've got the stairs going down, goes under the platform and it comes back up on the far side. And there's the main station building which leads out onto the uh, extension I put in a few weeks back. So you can see how long this train is. It goes underneath the footbridge, which was all made out of 3 mil plywood. Uh, there's a, a home signal box, and the whole idea was paint it, paint it up. Um, the woodwork was green and I painted it a maroon red to bring it in line with the northeastern colours. It looks too squeaky clean, it needs uh, dirty enough, I think. And uh, there's Sid, the station master, and his dog Ben. Now he's appeared in quite a few videos. And, uh, if you've been following this um, series from day one, I made a blooper here, and it was featured in a video. It came through the side here somewhere. I think it was this one when I was putting this lamp in, and uh, came through the wall. And uh, I think I made a bit of a song and dance about it, and I put. A a story behind it uh, regarding the hole in the wall bang and uh, the police are still investigating that one. I think I put a little bit of detail in this building not much, I think I just painted the walls inside I think I may have put fireplace in there as well See in there. But, uh, I did put lights in it earlier. I don't know if wrong at the moment. And as we move around, there's the garage. Um, this was a free kit that came with the railway modeler and I just added this bit and uh, turned it into a garage. Got a bit of a lean-to there with a couple of cats on it. And as we come round, we come round to the um, diesel storage depot for all my diesel locos I kept. Pine Dock Motive Depot. And of course, the 39 steps. All these buildings here are waiting to be revamped. Um, they're Kibri buildings, K-I-B-R-E. Before we get back on the train, we'll just have a look this side of town but one of the barren sites uh, hasn't been touched for a long time um, still not happy with the track plane so that's got to be lifted up at some point now I want to 
I'll bring the points further back if I can to give the sidings more length. But that's for another day. As we come round, you can see the locomotive depot. Um, still a few things I'd like to do to the depot. Um, I think I might want to change that wall tower out and make those sidings a bit longer. And, uh, See the spur here. I want to bring that out and maybe put a turntable in this little area here. So that's the Good Shed and New Hassel Junction North. Here we are at New Hassel. Um, what can I say about this station? I know I'm going to have to do a revisit it at some point. Um, I do like the main building, so that will stay. But the over roof, that will probably go. And a new roof will be put in this place. That will span all three platforms. And the far platform, I might lose that. I'm not sure yet. But so, let's have a look around. Track plan, I might change that as well. Might get rid of this single slip and put a crossover in instead and put a point here. And then reconnect it back up to the branch line. Um, as for the rest of it, I'm quite happy with the new Hassel Goods Yard. Um, could have done with having a put my extra feet in the Yeah. Still work to be done, especially in this area here. I was going to put a cattle dock and a slaughterhouse here. So we'll see, that might change. So this is looking at the other end from the northern side. With the bay platform. And if I spin the camera around can have a little look at the city as it were. It's only about two foot by three foot. 
But uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to swap trains. Uh, we're going to go from the A4 onto the A3, the Minaru. And uh, we'll follow the train round and we'll just pick out some bits and pieces to talk about as we go around. So here's a uh, Metcalf kit that I um, kit bashed. Um, I was given this and uh, it came in a really poor state and I uh, had to change the roof. Just absolutely gut it and uh, put it in a new floor and pedal dashed it. Uh, added some brick arches here and here and added some window sills and uh, I had to make up two new chimneys for it as well so that was a bit, bit of a job and I uh, enjoyed doing that right so as we spin around here we have St Hilda's Colliery and um, because of you guys and your suggestions especially with adding Fred Dibno on the chimney there I think that was a brilliant idea and, uh, I think I added some details into this as well I think and there we have the office and in the lower room there's a plant room with a winding engine and uh, even inside this floor here there's uh, bits and pieces there's a coal trolley hanging down ready to be tipped uh, in there I think you find another winding engine just there in the corner there that green but uh, you've got to really look in the windows to see the detail yeah that was a good little build and that's an old triangle build in there recycled repainted and reused and the tunnels now here's something you don't see every day another bare baseboard and this is just below high shields it's just there and um as you can see, this is where I'm going to be working next once South Shields is finished. Now this baseboard from that corner to the edge of the tunnels here is about two and a half meters long. And um, this is where I'm going to put a new station. But this is not the platform I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to make two brand new platforms. Um, 
and I'm going to put in a parson loop as well. Uh, there will be a little river here, and uh, I've got to cut out this section and make it wider to take two tracks because uh, we can't have what we've got here Mexican standoff between two locomotives. Sun chariot. And six oh eight six two V two I think it is. Yeah so I've got the points and um I've got the track, I've got the plans, the plans are in my head and, uh, and I think I might be able to come out at least another foot as well. So that's something for the future. And here we have Pilo Junction. And as you can see, the tracks peel off in three different directions. We have the runaround loop. This loop here just goes back to New Hassle. This pair of tracks come all the way up to South Shields. And the other one, the single one, just here, goes back to where we've just been looking at that uh, barren baseboard waiting for my attention. So I think you've seen it all now. Time for a little update where I'm at on the trusses. Where am I regarding the roof trusses? Right, um, I done some measurements between the two faces and it works out 1 meter and 20 and uh, you divide that by 28 and it gives me 36 trusses to make to go across from one side to the other and uh, I have managed to do 12 Um, so I still have 24 left to make. Uh, they're virtually coming out the same, which is good. Um, for building it, I'm going to have to make another jig and to keep one end square, which is the end or the side on platform two. So if I keep this side nice and flush with the apex to the top, as it were, when they're on. Just to stick one on so you can have a look-see. So if I get that point and that point correct, then I won't be too fussed what happens on the other side. As long as they uh, look uniform. That's going to be the hardest part I think is making sure that these trusses look uniform because there's 36 of them. Right so that's where I am with the roof. Now then regarding social stations for those of you who have only just joined recently and have not been following the build of the station you can go back to where it all began with this wall here being the first 
wall to be erected and each and every room has some detail in it um, so if you follow the progress you'll see what I mean uh, this is the luggage room and the lost property office and it looks like there's a dodgy character in there he's trying to stick something inside his, his jacket so that's the office and that's the luggage office and there's a guy there sitting on a chair and uh, there's a I think there's a hatch if I remember rightly I put a hatch in there there's the hatch look look through that window you see the hatch and uh, if you look through that window that's the gents you can see some sinks there now uh, if you want you can go back to 2020 start watching from last March and you'll see all the detail as the station developed so I think that's all from me guys uh, I hope you've enjoyed the tour and it's um, goodbye from me and it's goodbye from her Majesty. Thanks for watching now. Bye.